pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Alan, do you have any adjustments to the agenda? I don't believe so. Great. Um, okay, uh, we have three school board meeting uh, minutes to um, approve. First is Tuesday, November 3rd, which was our regular business meeting in November. Is there, can I have a motion to approve those meetings? So minutes. Excuse me. Thank you, Kathy. Second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Um, any questions, comments, or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay. Um, the special meeting on Tuesday, November 10th, I think there were just a few items on that. Um, can I have a motion to approve those meet minutes? So moved. Thank you, Linda. Second? Second. Thank you, Mary. Any um, comments or questions, corrections to that? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you, 6-0. And finally, um, the minutes for the special business meeting which was held last Monday, the 23rd. Um, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you, Karen. Um, is there a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> um, any questions or comments? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. So we're all set there. Um, comments by our student representatives. Shall we start with the middle school? Um, I'm Mackenzie Layton. And I'm Isabel Clark. Uh, so last month we did stuff the bus for the Preble Street food drive and we brought in canned goods and we ended up getting a lot of cans. It was very successful. And also in November our school put on the production of A Christmas Carol which went well and was well attended. And also November was Kindness Month, and a speaker named Michael Chase came to our school to talk about his wisdom of kindness from the Kindness Center. And when, in seventh grade advisory for Kindness Month, we every advisory got assigned a certain person, and you had to write a card saying something kind about that person and we posted them on their lockers without our names. And also in eighth grade, every morning we shared something that we did that was kind. Um, in addition, there's some sports starting. Boys basketball, well it started already, but it ends January 6th. And girls basketball is starting January 4th. And also Nordic skiing is starting next Monday, December 7th. Also, the 7th and 8th grade dance is coming up on December 18th from 7 to 9. And we're going to be sending out a survey on the theme of the dance. Some different theme ideas we had are like neon or flashback, stuff like that. And also for band and chorus, the 7th and 6th grade band and concert will be held on December 6th, 7th through the sixth in the for the sixth grade in the cons, concert is held at the cafetorium at seven PM and on December ninth the seventh and eighth grade band and chorus concert in the cafetorium at seven PM and also for chorus we are going to do um, a caroling trip to Village Crossing just to brighten their day. And on December 18th, 7th and 8th grade dance will be held 7 to 9 p.m. at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School gym and it cost five dollars to get in. So that's pretty much it that's been going on in the month of this uh, November and what's going to be coming up. So are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Matt or Julia, do either of you have comments from the high school? Um, I just hearing uh, middle school 
will say that our winter sports are starting up as well. The um, preseason started over the Thanksgiving vacation, so some kids are facing some busier schedules. Um, but I'd say other than that, nothing too exciting has been going on the last month. Yep, nothing much else to report. <laughs> Do something about that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, comments from the public on non-agenda items. Okay, recognition. Middle school drama production and high school theater production. You, me. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Oh, uh, well, I, well, I'll just comment again that the middle school drama club, as you noted, uh, presented week before last. Yeah. Okay. It was an excellent, excellent e uh, evening. I had an opportunity to do it in the afternoon. Uh, because I had a commitment that evening, but uh, very well done. I think one of the things that always amazes me is how the students learn the lines. And they had a star, Ebenezer, who had an enormous number of lines to do, and he did them perfectly. And so I just can't uh, help but say that the, the wonderful work that you do at the middle school is, is unbelievable. Then we transition to the high school. Uh, I happened to get to the high school production uh, the very last night, uh, and it was it was excellent. It was a full house. Number one, it was the night before Thanksgiving. It was a full house. There was not a seat in the house, and people standing in the back. But again, a very very well done. And there, what you saw was not only high school kids, but younger students, including one baby, and young, kids who were in uh, Pond Cove, and I think some that were even younger that were not even in Pond Cove yet. And it was just tremendous. Again to see how they, how they did that. And it was the night before Thanksgiving, so it was their very last performance. But um, for both groups, I, can't, I give highest praise to all the work that they did. Anyone else want to comment? I would just echo your comments. I attended both of them, and it's just amazing the amount of time and commitment that the staff, the students, the parents, and the families put into those productions. Um, the state championship girls cross country team Okay. <laughs> um, the girls cross country team at the high school were um, ch state champions again I think the third or fourth year in a row and we traditionally have recognized the teams that achieve um, that or that reach that achievement. So congratulations to the high school girls cross country team. Um, Marguerite Lala Rohner and Susan Dana's national professional teaching certification. And I, I would just like to comment on it first, and then I'm going to ask them to come up and perhaps say a few words about the process that they have gone through. Uh, they are the first two teachers in Cape Elizabeth who have received the National Professional Teaching Certification. I believe there was one teacher prior to them who has left our system. But the amount of work that the two of them have put in in order to reach this status is just unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, I've talked with each of them some days when some of them are a little frustrated at what they've had to do for it. Other days when they are just so excited about what has happened. But it certainly places them at a very different level as far as teaching is, and uh, their work in schools is concerned. Uh, the board, if you remember correctly, we had this discussion uh, a year and a half ago. We set the money aside so that we could start a couple of our teachers at a time. I will be interested to see how many others will come forward from there. And so I would ask Marguerite and Susan if you would come up for a couple of minutes and just talk about your experiences in becoming uh, qualified national teachers. Mm -hmm. yes, I'd actually like to give them a round of applause and a yes. standing ovation. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. I'm really honored to, uh, to be here. I'll just try to keep this brief. It's really hard. It was really an 18-month process, so it's really hard to try to keep this to two or three minutes. I mean, you've got a, it's always a, a busy agenda, but I um, just want to thank, I mean, the school did support us. We did receive, actually both of us had um, scholarship money from the state to go through this process as well. Half of it was paid by the town of Cape Elizabeth and half by the state of Maine. Um, it is a hefty fee to go through this process. Um, so I, I thank you for the financial support there. And um, I don't know, it's just, I think um, the, reason, the reason I went through this is just because, I know at least for me in Maine, there are no graduate courses in Spanish, so for me to pursue, or postgraduate, I already have my master's degree, 
So it's either pursue a PhD, which I looked into, but then I'd have to leave my job. I'd have to take a leave of absence. I didn't want to do that. So this was the next best thing to try to challenge myself, which in turn would um, hopefully enhance my teaching and benefit the students of, of Cape Elizabeth. So this was um, the alternative that I chose to pursuing the PhD. But um, it was a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. Um, our, I, I think I logged about 575 hours of work in, in addition to teaching full time. Um, I, there are just a lot of people, just really quickly, I feel like the, the Oscars here, but just a lot of people that, that <laughs> Where's the music? But it's amazing that so many people really supported us in this endeavor. Community people, um, teachers, staff, administration, uh, students. students. Students were amazing. I, I think probably my, my most heartfelt thanks will go to the class of 2013 because they went through this whole process with me last mm -hmm. year. Hours and hours and hours of videotape. And so I really like the class of 2013, thank you if they're listening, because the, the best thing they did is they were just themselves in my classroom. Um, as we went through every day, every lesson, they never knew what we were going to do. And they got used to the videotape in the classroom and just kind of went on with their daily uh, routine. But that really is what made the difference, because we had to submit two of our four portfolios included 15-minute uncut, unedited videotapes of us teaching, dealing, and also incorporating 50, the different multiple intelligences within 15 minutes, and it was just it was a lot of work, so and just in terms of that. So I really would like to thank the students, because it's really, I think the reason we did this is, is for the students. And there were many times during the, years, the year that we wished we had gone for a doctorate instead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted to thank Trish, you were in filming, and the filming part wasn't easy because it's contrived. You're setting, up a set, you're setting up your classroom. I had Steve Conley in filming, and he talked during my film, so I had to cancel that one out. <laughs> but you had to set up a contrived situation and make it look natural, and then you had to translate what you did in the classroom into current theories in education, but it had to be embedded. It couldn't be obvious. So when I did send out my work, I sent one daughter of mine was in Venezuela, and I'd keep sending her my proofs to read, and she stopped emailing me back. And she said, what they're doing is they're teaching you how to write like a textbook. And in hindsight, I think, I think that's how we did have to present it. And it is so different than what you do in everyday life as a teacher. And it was so overwhelming. I still haven't processed it. I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> this Christmas, we'll be able to celebrate. Thanksgiving was different this year. We won't be at school every weekend, every evening, all the time. <coughs> I won't be in the office complaining every day. Well, not about that. I'll complain about something else. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to, we've got to thank the students, the students and the community, because it was too much to do alone. Yeah. Now, so just one last thing. I, I feel that in this community there is a real value of education, and I feel that when I walk in the classroom, I have the freedom to kind of think outside of the box and do what I want to do. Sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does. But especially having gone through this process and after dialogue with teachers from around the country, I realize some schools, and there are, I'm surprised at the number where today is December 1st and this is the lesson plan you're on and this is the page that you're on. And um, I'm glad that we have the freedom to explore and we're not that, it's not that um, strict. We have a curriculum, but when I, that we do have a curriculum that we're following, but um, I feel that we're given the, the opportunity to, to explore ourselves as teachers and improve ourselves as teachers and, and take, a, take a, a chance with a lesson. Um, some didn't work, some of my videotapes, so I'm not using that one, but, um, but I, I thank you again for the opportunity for us to, um, whatever, just to, to use our creativity, I guess. And we're really glad we passed, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. I just, uh, I, I just wanted to add on behalf of the board that I think the two of you are real inspiration <coughs> for your colleagues and um, a thank you for going well above and beyond the call of duty for your students. It's, it's amazing um, what you did and I think it's just terrific. So thank you. Yes. I just want to say I went through, not me personally, but watching a mentor that I talked with this was when it first got up and running, and I saw her slave away for that extended period of time. So when I found out the two of you were doing it, I was very excited for the same reasons Trisha was saying. You're such an inspiration, but I know the hard work that goes into it, because I was one of the people that got to proof, and they did keep on coming. But it's a really impressive process that you, that you went through, so kudos to you. 
Okay, Alan, I think you're on. Thank you. I'm going to move for it. Our last item of recognition is school board. And I didn't bring my Kleenex. <laughs> Thank you. For just a few minutes, I'd like to have the opportunity to speak from here, as opposed from the Diaz, about some of the members of our board. <clears throat> and I hope I don't choke in that process. I, I'm suffering from a cold, so. Um, as all of us recognize, uh, selected members of the local school board take on an extremely important position for both supporting educational opportunities of each and every student in the schools, as well as preparing for the future as those students move on through our school system from K through 12. And the focus that they, these board members need to have is extremely important. Coupled with all that they are doing, the ever-increasing education demands on an ever-changing world, the varied perceptions of education by the public, the changing demands of social issues, and the ever-changing views of the research that reflect on the learning process for all students influence every step of the way in everything that they do. This evening, we have three school board members who are leaving. I would like to take just a few minutes to talk about each one of them briefly. The first one, unfortunately, is not here, Peter Carter. Peter has given the past three years to the uh, Cape Elizabeth School Board. Peter's a businessman. He's a former town manager. Uh, he most recently has been part of the Department of Health and Human Services. He's a father of two children who graduated from Cape Elizabeth schools and the husband of a former teacher. So he came to the board with a broad understanding of the work of the state government, the financial demands on the state and the local community, and on careful decisions we have to make in moving forward. As a member of the school board, he has given much of his time to the negotiations process, bringing a strong understanding of the needs of the financial position we stand in at this point in time. He will often laugh and say, you know, I ended one of those meetings by having a heart attack. And that closed the meeting down quite rapidly. But uh, he, had, he concentrated enormous amounts of time on that. And what I found with him is he was not afraid to call a spade a spade. And what the issues are as we move forward. As a member of the school board, he also served in the turf committee. Uh, another committee that took a great deal of time and effort as the kids' turf committee was beginning to raise the funds that were necessary to build the turf field. Again, Peter asked a lot of the important questions. He wanted to be sure that everyone understood what we were doing, why we were doing it, what was, going to be, what was the end product, and how were we going to manage that process. He gave the time readily. He was readily available, and he worked carefully with people in order to make that happen. Peter, uh, from my perspective, has an eagle eye as we went through things. He's often quiet. He doesn't always say things, but he watches carefully. And he doesn't hesitate to tell us, just beware what's going on at the state level, and know that changes can come at a moment's notice. As a member of the co-curricular committee, Peter has had a clear voice uh, with regard to costs and the purpose for each of the groups named in the contract. And as a member of the Human Resources Committee, he has helped manage the process of developing strong job descriptions and high expectation for our professional involvement. Peter's been an insightful member of the board. Uh, he has helped us assess state financial needs that are related to the local taxpayer, and his commitment to education will be missed. One of the things I should say to you is, the normal procedure has been when someone leaves, we buy them a picture. And what I found in the last couple of years is not everyone wants the picture. Some people have other requests. So in talking with Peter, Peter had requested that the picture not be given to him, but that a donation that would have been used to purchase the picture be given to the First Congregational Church's Community Crisis Ministries Fund. And so that donation has been made to them in honor of Peter. Our second person I wanted to speak about is Karen Burke.
Karen has been on the school board for three years. She came to the board as an experienced teacher and one who truly exhibits her strong, and I say strong, devotion to young people and how the school system educates the whole child to look at them academically, socially, emotionally, and humanly. Remember that word. <laughs> Karen has great passion coupled with a true ability to observe, to question and discuss, to find answers, and to seek clarity. Karen's leadership of the Wellness Committee has truly led to a dedicated group of parents, students, and staff who have focused on the area of wellness as a basis for developing a school system that can focus on nutrition, mental health, and caring for each and every person. Utilizing the support of Let's Go, uh, going, uh, going to the schools, looking for grants, community members, and other resources, she has brought change that have supported positive improvements to our food service program. And from, a, uh, from re redesigning the high school, to buying new equipment, to getting better food processes, and getting people really sold on that process. Karen has done an amazing job, and what I find with Karen, she does it quietly, and she leads quietly, but she leads, and she does a wonderful job doing that. None of us will forget her leadership with the committee in August, when as a team provided wellness support to the staff during our four days of staff development. Then there is the new teacher and learning committee where Karen has provided, again, extremely strong leadership. It, as we relook re at the role of curriculum, instruction, and assessment with programs developed by administrators and staff. This new committee has been an extremely important committee. And Karen has slowly but surely worked her way through the process to come up with some very clear direction for where that committee is going. And that committee will be extremely important as time goes on. Karen, you care. You have led all of us to, re to reflect on all we do and be sure we are the best educators possible. You will be missed, but your work as a board member will lead us and you to a future plans to return to education, which I understand is a dream of yours. So we look forward to that. Again, I checked with Karen. She asked that a donation be made to the C Foundation. But I would ask you, Karen, if you could come up, and I have. So I wanted to say thanks. Um, it is hard to believe that three years have flown by so quickly. I am very grateful to the members of this community who, with their vote, gave me the opportunity to serve on the school board. It has been an honor and a privilege. I have met some extraordinary people, people who care passionately about making things better, about making a difference, about caring for kids and their colleagues. Whether or not it was during wellness committee work, teacher contract negotiations, the CEF grant season, the evolution of the teaching and learning committee, the infamous budget season, and so on, people are working hard to try to do what is best. To my fellow school board members, a personal thanks. I have now had the pleasure of working closely with each of you over the past three years and one year with Mary. We have certainly had our work cut out for us. Instead of being able to primarily focus on what I refer to as the exciting and arguably the most important stuff in education, like making sure we are on the cutting edge of all that education has to offer, we are repeatedly asked to look at the bottom line, do more with less, reallocate, make tough decisions and get them right, respond to angry citizens, put out the fires, etc., but never forgetting to keep Cape the excellent school district that we can be proud of. This is an awesome task. So thank you, Linda, for your sense of humor during tough times, for taking your work seriously and caring when your plate is so full. Thank you, Rebecca, 
for staying on top of the legislative issues, delving into the advocacy part for our schools, and making things happen like text we can. Thank you, Mary, for lighting a fire under the conversation around education. It will never be easy, but it is by far one of the most important conversations we can have and one of the most important issues we can support. Thank you, Kathy, for your friendship and counsel. We've had many intense conversations, but have always been able to appreciate and respect where we are each coming from, even when we disagree. Your steady hand and poise under tough circumstances has been a real asset for this board. And thank you, Trish, for your 24-7 commitment to our schools. Your dedication and hard work have made you invaluable. You have been a tremendous, if not a little intimidating, <laughs> role model for many of us. <laughs> and thank you, Peter, who's not here for lending an ear and being there to support me, especially when I face some challenging stumbling blocks along the way. I wish you weren't always right about the state, but I'm afraid your voice often rings true. And to Alan, an especially big thanks. I don't know how you're able to do all that you do. The responsibilities and expectations would overwhelm most people, and your leadership is critical to the health and success of our school system and our community. I have deep admiration for anyone who works as hard as you do on behalf of our schools and public education. And finally, I do have one last request of the school board members, current and future, and staff and community members. Please do what you can do to take good care of our schools and to take good care of each other. Building each other up rather than bringing each other down. For I believe strongly that it is our personal approach, hard work, and willingness to fight for what we believe is best for our schools that will make all the difference. So thank you very much. And certainly last, but certainly far from least, is Trish Brigham. Trish has served on the school board for six years. So she was on the school board before I came here. So she has either the pleasure or the worry about selecting me as superintendent five years ago. But when I think of Trish, there are certain words that come to my mind. The first one is passionate. She is passionate about schools. She is passionate about education. She is passionate about what we do. She's dedicated. She's always there. I can always depend on her. I can always call her and say, Trish, I need you to come and sit down and talk with me for a few minutes. She's creative. She's enthusiastic. And for the past six years, she has focused her efforts on ever improving the school system in Cape Elizabeth. She's been available as an observer, as a researcher, as a problem solver, and, and many times as a dreamer when it comes to the broader perspective of looking at us as a K through 12 school system. The work that she has done has helped us develop our programs looking at the needs of students. She is so good at going out and talking with students and hearing what they have to say and bringing that information back often through reading, through talking with other schools, through looking at other processes, in order to help all of us begin to refocus our feelings once again. All too often, we can go off on a path, and we need somebody to bring us back to the right path, and she has been able to do it. She is an observer of human behavior, and she helps us to consider all possibilities. As a superintendent who is hired by the school board to lead the system, I see Trish as a leader who understands the educational, financial, and political needs of a school system. And I need board members like that who understand all components of that process. For the past five years, I have seen Trish as a trusted, insightful board member who feels comfortable discussing both the positive aspects and the needs of our system and providing thoughts for the next steps. The chair of the board is an extremely important leader for the school board and for the superintendent. Trish has been a very effective chair who has given large, and I say large in all capital letters, 
uh, uh, quantities of her time. And most had met with me to plan, to set clear timelines, and to communicate basic information to the school board. Because all too frequently we know it is difficult for me to meet with all members of the school board without it being a public meeting. And so she has done a great job with that. Both Trish and before her Kathy Ray have truly dedicated an enormous amount of time in order to be sure we are on the right track. Now, I haven't gone through all of the committees Trish has been on, because if I had, I would take six or seven pages. But I think the one committee that I really focus on over and over again is the policy committee. Trish was a chair of the policy committee through some pretty difficult times. Probably the most, uh, the time that we remember best is when the substance abuse policy uh, came into being. Trish worked hard with students, with staff, with administration, and everyone else to manage the process of getting that policy put together. And I know Rebecca would say, it continues to appear. And it will always continue to appear just because of the type of policy it is. But Trish, your work in the school system for students, the staff, the support staff and administration, has been highly regarded and respected. And you will be missed as a board member and as the chair. I know you won't forget us. Your passion about schools will constantly remain there. And you'll be back to remind us. And again, uh, at Trish's request, we have made a, do a donation to Seat in honor of her. And Trish, could you come up, please? not have prepared words because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to speak without my voice shaking. Um, I will echo everything that Karen said. I appreciate it. It's been an honor and a privilege and see I knew it. Um, <laughs> I will miss the work and most importantly I will miss the people that I've had the opportunity to work with. Thank you. I can't keep going so I'm going to stop. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Alan, very and everyone else. Um, CEF grant communications, Karen, you want to give us a quick update? Yes, um, the CEF grants went through for the fall of 2009, and there were some very exciting grants that were awarded, and I just would like to give a brief overview because of the amount of time and effort that is spent on um, the part of the teachers writing the grants, presenting the grants um, on the part of the CEF Grants Committee and the CEF Board reviewing them and, and finally approving the slate. Um, it's a pretty extraordinary process and there were probably about $90,000 worth of grants and they were able to um, give out about $40,000. Uh, it was some pretty exciting things. So for Pond Cove, um, there was one very large grant that was accepted, which is technology in the elementary classroom. And uh, that's going to make a huge impact on what technology is available in all of the Pond Cove classrooms. They also approved therapeutic horseback riding, once again, an English language learner, an English language learner resource library. So they gave about $16,000 to the Pond Cove school. Um, for middle school, they approved the seventh grade Boston field trip, um, a partial funding over three years for the Chowanke outdoor experience. Um, so it says, so the grant will provide 10,000 over three years. A matching anonymous grant will help the legacy of this much loved sixth grade program, which is very exciting, especially for all of the parents and students, you know, former students who have gone and loved the experience and going forward. It will be nice to keep that for at least a couple more years. Um, science and technology in the 21st century, that was a large grant of $11,000, which will really significantly help us move forward with technology in the middle school. A sixth grade podcasting grant was accepted, a middle school month of wellness with Gretchen McCloy behind the wheel, and she's been doing some impressive things already, was accepted. And then a global connections grant, which Susan Dana is involved with. Um, 
which brings more immigrant stories to our students, parents, and community, fostering cultural diversity and world understanding here in Cape. Um, so the total amount for middle school was 21000 almost $22,000. And then for high school, um, they approved a Latin III uh, um, funding for Latin, oh, excuse me, essential texts for this Latin III class and also an engineering curriculum development plan with Evan Thayer um, helping with that. So it, it, was, a, it was a wonderful um, experience for me. This is the third year I've done it as a um, school board liaison to CEF, and I see all the time and effort that everybody puts into it, and it's so <coughs> wonderful that these innovative grants that we can still bring in and see the teachers get excited about the innovative stuff that you can be doing around education. So it's definitely one of my highlights as a board member has been to serve in, in that role, and um, I'm very appreciative of all that CEF does. So wanted to share that with you. Thank you, Karen. Does anyone have any questions for Karen on the, any of the Steve? Okay, legislative. You and Rebecca are going to start. Thanks, with Rebecca. 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 Okay, Rebecca. You had an interesting day today, I'm sure. <laughs> and I'm sure if you would love to share, if you could share with us. Um, yes, the meeting went for two and a half hours, so I'm going to do wow. my best to keep it as simple as possible. Um, Alan and I and. Um, Sarah Lennon, Frank Arvanelli, David Hillman, Cynthia Dill, Larry Bliss, Jane Eberly, and Alan Hawkins met with poor Jim Ryer. Um, we definitely filled up the conference table. Um, but I have to say that it was a very productive meeting. Um, it was very informative and very cordial. Um, and I walk, walked away with some information that I will make sure it gets shared with the full board. We'll make some copies. Uh, there's a very interesting two. I, well, I, I love bar charts, so anyways, well, not charts. Um, but there's two, two very interesting handouts that he gave us. One was to show us the trend line for funding um, of, of state education costs and where the state of Maine is going to be going in the long term over the next several years and the use of um, federal stimulus funds. And I think um, very interestingly for everybody is a graph of our valuation, which is good news for us because you see here, this is the peak. This is our current fiscal year. This is why we lost as much money as we did. Um, and it's going down fairly substantially. Going into this meeting, I was quite concerned that that wasn't really going to play out in any substantial way for us because it was my belief that everybody was going to be going down with us and so um, it would just all be a wash. However, um, our valuation is going to be decreasing. I actually did not have time to calculate what, what he, uh, he actually has an actual number that they're going to be using and I did not calculate that decrease. But he says the state average is an increase of 3%. So the good news is, is that we may get a little bit of relief from the big cut that's coming from the fact that our valuation um, has decreased. That this in no way implies that we're not going to be cut, um, but perhaps the, the, um, the net amount will be just a little bit less than what we are forecasting. Okay, Kathy, you're looking puzzled, so I'll oh, stop. Oh. No, I'm just trying, following <laughs> along. Are you talking now about 10 and 11? Or you yes, okay. next year. Okay, no, yeah. but not, not affecting this year. Not this year. No, this is why we're in such bad shape. Okay. And this is why our curtailment is so, is so bad. It's because we, we peaked the year that we're getting hammered with the curtail in terms of state valuation, the year that we're getting, getting hammered. And indeed, um, Mr. Ryer confirmed that really ultimately, as I said his last name correctly, I was well behaved, um, that the big, the big impact on, on allocation to districts really is um, state valuation, property valuation. Um, and when I, we asked, you know, please walk us through how um, you can have a big receiver of state aid receive a minimal curtailment and how a large receive, a small receiver of state aid can receive a large curtailment he said it's, a, it's because of the formula, uh, the funding mechanism using property valuation. Um, interestingly, uh, the night before, the day before, 
uh, we discovered that there is, by law, a minimum state allocation requirement for the districts, not just for the state level, but for districts, that they are required to maintain a certain level. However, it's a level that can change. It's not an absolute level. It's not an absolute percentage of education costs. But it is interesting to know that um, if the allocation falls below 5% of the um, EPS pupil rate times the number of students or 50% uh, of special education costs, um, the district will receive the larger of those two. Yeah, don't ask me why. Um, but the, the, the district received the larger of the two. However, I did not um, get a, a question answer asked that came to me later, which is um, they, in this curtailment, the governor has reduced the state contribution to, they have reduced the adjustment to certain districts of the special education See, I can't even say this right. Anyways, it used to be 50%. They reduced it to 40%. Now they're talking maybe next year it's going to be reduced to 35%. So, I, so I'm not sure whether that also will impact what that threshold is for that state funding analysis. So good news, bad news, as always. Um, let me see. Uh, anything else? We talked about... Um, oh, we, we noted to Mr. Ryer that it seemed as if the EPS formula and funding mechanisms did not reward efficiency and performance that seemed to be in contradiction to the goals of the consolidation law and how could they, uh, how would he, does he feel similarly and blah, blah, and he, and he immediately said, well, actually, this year, um, those districts that do not consolidate um, will be uh, assessed some penalties and I am struggling to find where that is um, but I believe that they will their system administration costs funding will be halved reduced by 50 percent and Alan, do you remember what the other one was? I think that was the major piece to it, but also that they would be taking a look at the EPS formula and taking out a percent thereof for them as well. But I think the uh, major focus was the uh, district administration. And their, their local share mill rate will be increased by 2%. Huh. Not an earth-shattering increase, but yet an increase. So, um, and, you know, as you may know, the penalties were waived this past, this for this year because there was a referendum that was being voted on. Um, now that that referendum has been decided, these penalties are going to be assessed. Um, and because of that, uh, our EPS or our, our EPS number actually may be changed as a result of some of these penalties that are going to be... Um, some of that money will be returned yeah. to those of us who have done that. Right. Um, bad news. As we all know, that they have said that the um, revenue shortfall is even larger than what they are currently dealing with, and that there's going to be another so 183 million uh, shortfall in the revenue. This shortfall that needs to be dealt with, according to Mr. Ryer, is not going to be handled through another curtailment that it's going to be um, dealt with through the governor's supplemental budget, uh, which implies that he is going to be taking an approach that's not going to be a percentage methodology. He's, this curtailment, you're basically forced to say it's going to be 10% across the board. Yeah. If it's in the supplemental budget, I suspect there may be specific change, recommended changes to laws um, surrounding everything from education to environment and other things to reduce the cost of these programs to the state. Yeah. Okay? Um, that would be my, my guess of what he was trying to hint at. Uh, I think that's it. I will try to write all this down before it completely leaves my 
brain in the next probably 24 hours and, and have it available for, for the board. Um, and I can, you know, certainly answer any questions that you might have. I have a question. Um, the, um, the districts that are going to be penalized, are they going to do that by reducing their funding or are they going to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because when they, when, they cut their, when they cut the state allocation for system administration in half, that's a reduction in state funding. So it didn't really reward us for being high performing and um, high efficiency. It's opposite. It's penalizing Mr. them. Mr. For Ryer would debate whether that's, it's a, a system that rewards or penalizes. He did not like the term penalty. Oh, okay. It is a penalty. I, Sorry, that was my interpretation. There weren't. Certainly, uh, I, I did not feel it was probably use, good use of our time to argue whether it's a penalty or reward. So, you know. So we don't get a stick and we don't get a carrot. <laughs> yeah. and, I, I think the only other thing that I would add to it is one of the things that I was looking for <laughs> is some guidance for fiscal year 11. And there certainly was not a lot of guidance given to us. And we asked specific questions. And, and I, I don't blame Jim Ryer for this. It is the, the process that they're going through uh, at the state level, dealing both with the legislature, who can make decisions uh, based on what the need, perceived need is by a majority of the people in the state. But what it does say to us is that it is more than likely that the amount of money that we receive next year will be much smaller than it was this year and much smaller than it was the year before. Uh, we, he was looking at funding that could be less than $1 million yeah. for us. And so that, that was an important piece to us. We did ask about the uh, stimulus money and what is there. Uh, what he did, he could give us the general overview of what the big picture is, but he couldn't give us the overview of what, what would Cape Elizabeth specifically get what would each town specifically get in the process. So I think from the perspective of the meeting, I think it was a very valuable meeting. And I'd like to take just a minute to thank Rebecca, because I think she did a tremendous job in keeping our focus on that and avoiding us getting into a lot of the politics, but keeping our focus on where we were going. So I think it was a really valuable meeting. I think Jim had done a lot of work for us. But I will say to you that I left there probably as frustrated as I was when I went in when I begin to look at the FY11 budget, because it is, it is going to be a very difficult budget to build and build on unknowns. I build budgets every year on a lot of unknowns, but the unknowns that we have this year are so much different, and there are so many of them that we're <coughs> prepared for. So uh, we still, the job is still going to be a major job to do FY11. He, he did say that we could he thinks that we could roughly take four times the reduction that we got this current year, so times the reduction we got this current year, multiply it by four, to get, mm -hmm, to get, to get to where we will be in funding from the state next year. Um, however, he said that perhaps that could be an overestimation of how much our reduction will be because of our change in valuation and because of penalties or rewards. Um, for the um, consolidation um, outcomes. But I think that what he, what, he, what he talked about, we are not that far off of what we looked at in the curtailment committee. If you were to add back in a, a rough estimate of, the st of um, stimulus money, um, we were really actually not that far off. So. Any other questions for Rebecca? Um, um, so, quick, go ahead, Mary. Quick question, um, and it's a political question. Have we been completely, I, I don't know if you talked with him about this at all. I know the stimulus money ends in 2012 that we will have no stimulus money. Have we been com completely disqualified for the race to the top funds because we, um, Commissioner Gendron, um, said we would not, she wouldn't introduce charter school legislation. Do you want to speak to it? Sure. Um, yes and no. Um, I'm going to try to say this without sounding as angry as I am. 
We have missed the first application. We will be missing the first application deadline that's in January, January because it's just too tight of a deadline and he does not know how any state could possibly make that deadline. But interestingly enough, there's plenty of states that are making that deadline. Um, he then addressed the fact that there is a second deadline in June, which the commissioner is working toward and is uh, slaving over the concept of an alternative school. That's not the charter school, but an alternative school, and in hopes that that would meet the requirements of the Race to the Top stimulus funds. Having said that, from my personal understanding, there are a variety of, of stimulus funds in this area, not just focused on charter, but also about examining the state's approach to teacher evaluation, assessments, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that there is and has been work at the state level to um, planning on applying for the stimulus funds that would meet those areas. And then perhaps if this alternative school meets the requirements, sorry, I have to laugh. <laughs> um, if it meets the federal requirements, then maybe uh, the state would get some of that funding also. Net net, the pool of stimulus funds that are available to Maine, the estimate is about $25 million. When you're talking about a $183 million shortfall, <clears throat> it doesn't really sound all that awesome. But any money is better than no money. And the alternative school, any idea no. about what that is? <laughs> no. I, I, from, from what I understand in the process is, number one, we have, we have not adopted in the state charter schools. Right. Uh, it came to the legislature last year, and the vo vote, I understand, was fairly close mm -hmm. on that. Uh, it will probably come before the legislature this year. But what uh, the commission is working on, and I don't have the definition, I, it wasn't given to us today, about what an alternative program is. I mean, I know alternative programs from other systems, mm -hmm. but I think there is a new definition that she hopes will be used. But she's, she will have to get permission from the feds in order to work that alternative school in if we don't have charter schools. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I felt like when we left there, anyways, it was a very general thought at that point in time. And I know they're probably putting some work into it. So if I'm understanding you, Alan, uh. this alternative vision that they might have would be driven by some type of state mandate as to what that would look like in order to qualify as opposed to theoretically what charter schools and, and alternative schools right. really are all about, which is really more of a grassroots experimentation, mm -hmm. yeah. different yeah. approach. That would definitely be my sign. Backwards yeah. and bureaucratic. Right direct opposition to what charters and alternative schools are really all about. So I, I would see having some issues with that. Yep. And I would agree with you. I think that's the thinking process going on at this point. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you very much, Rebecca, Allen, and the rest mm -hmm. of the group that went up today. That was wonderful. And also, I think we need to thank our um, legislators themselves, Portland, Kip Elizabeth, who've been meeting with us. I and guess, thank you to Larry monthly. for setting up the meeting yeah. for us. Because, uh, as I've said, I, uh, <laughs> I have sent numerous emails and made numerous phone calls to ask for meetings and never once got a reply. So Larry, within a day, was able to get us a meeting. So That's the difference. And the time that they spent in meetings with us as well, Cynthia and Jane right. and Larry. So thank you very and much. And we'll continue to yeah. spend with us. <laughs> um, okay. Any other com anything else for legislative that we need to? Okay. All right, new business, um, consideration of the following high school athletic fee position. And that position is Mitchell Willat, who would be the assistant boys basketball coach. Uh, if you, uh, the sheet that you have with you, uh, coaching level would be three, it'd be $1,500 stipend, and that would be paid by the boosters. Uh, this is, a, is not a new position, but he is a new hire within that position, and it also gives a brief summary of his background. Is there a motion to accept the superintendent's nomination for this position? So moved. Thank you, Rebecca. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? OK. 
Okay. Okay. Consideration of the following middle school athletic fee positions. Those positions are listed on your agenda, but I have them here also. Oh, I see they're on the back as well. Uh, the first one is Carrie McCusker from uh, Middle School Nordic. Uh, the second one is Jane Thomas, also from Middle School Nordic. Joe Doan from Middle School Indoor Track. Charlie Carroll from Middle School Indoor Track. And Anne Marie Dion for Middle School Indoor Assistant. I'm, I'm doing those quickly because they are not new positions uh, and they are all people who have been there in the past. If you turn the paper over, uh, you also see Jeremy uh, LaRose, who would be doing Middle School Indoor Assistant and Chris uh, Drake for 7th and 8th grade swim. Those again are not new, are, are positions already there and they are not new hires. Maureen Cahill, who will be 7th grade basketball, girls basketball coach, we, this is not a new position, but she is a new hire. And it tells you at the bottom that she does work in the district and she coaches middle school field hockey and played basketball at uh, UNE. If no one is opposed to taking this as a slate. Um, is there, can I have a motion to accept these recommendations? So moved. Thank you, Linda. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Mary. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? 6-0. Okay, consideration of certification of employment and salary of superintendent for 2010-11. <coughs> uh, yes, the HR committee would like to put a motion for uh, before the board, uh, pursuant to Title 20A MRSA Section 1051 for renewal of the superintendent's contract for 2010-2011. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Kathy. Any questions or comments? Um, I would like to point out um, that this would be the second year in a row that um, Superintendent Hawkins has not asked for um, an increase in pay. His increase will be zero percent. And um, Alan, I would like to thank you for your leadership in that and the sacrifice that that um, entails. And um, I think this is a time when we're all sacrificing um, where we can. And um, I appreciate personally um, that willingness. Um, I, I would like to point out, uh, as a member of the HR committee, we look at, um, at sort of a survey of uh, the local superintendents in our area, and it's a little disturbing, or it is disturbing to me that our superintendent salary does fall, um, falls towards the bottom of the pack pretty significantly. So to have another 0% increase, uh, it puts us further um, further down from our peer schools. Um, so I think um, I will support this um, with the knowledge that next year I think we will have to consider some sort of increase for our superintendent. Um, Alan, I think you work very, very hard. Um, you deserve, um, you know, you deserve an increase. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know how we would do that. I think we're going to have to get creative, whether we um, decide to do deferred compensation, a bonus. I mean, I think we should look at all aspects, the HR committee maybe next year, um, to bring Alan to more within the fray of our peer communities um, with his compensation package. And those are my comments. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? I think we all feel thankful that you're doing this, Alan, and taking the leadership. And um, it, you really deserve uh, more for the amount of work you put in. So thank you. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor? Six zero. Um, consideration to approve the curtailment committee and its membership. Um, this committee was discussed and formulated um, at the business meeting that we had last week, but we never officially voted to create the committee. And as it is a school board ad hoc committee, um, we need to do that. I think everyone has a copy of the, I'm wondering, should I read this? No, oh, it's coming, okay. I'm wondering if I should read this. Okay. 
The committee. Um, okay. The, this, this, there is hereby established a Cape Elizabeth ad hoc curtailment committee. The committee shall consist of seven members. Two members shall be members of the school board. Two members shall be members of the town council. One member shall be a member of the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. One member shall represent the Cape Elizabeth Education Association. And there shall be one student member who is the high school student advisory council represented to the school board. The charge of the committee, the committee shall prepare recommendations for addressing the financing needs of the schools in response to significant reductions in the state's general purpose aid to education for fiscal years 2009-10, which is the budget curtailment, and fiscal year 2010-11. The committee shall present a report to the school board and other related town organizations no later than January 15, 2010. The committee staff shall also include the superintendent, town manager, and business manager. Um, can I have a motion to approve this? So, so moved. Thank you, Rebecca. Second? Second. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Um, questions, comments, edits? Seeing none, all those in favor? Six zero. Uh, consideration to approve the Cape Elizabeth Schools Teacher Certification Renewal Plan. This was revised in November 2009. Excuse me, Trish. Yes, I think sorry. as a follow-up to that, um, the school board should approve the two school board members. Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you very much, Kathy. Mm -hmm. um, I did general membership, but um, uh, so we need a motion, an official motion, because I don't think we did that. So let's. Um, who are the members of, of the school board? Kathy and myself. Oh, Rebecca and Kathy. Karen, since you made the nomination. Since I nominated. Karen nominated. <laughs> I, would I would like to. When I wasn't there, yes. Accept um, Kathy Ray and Rebecca Miller to serve on the Cape Elizabeth Particular Committee. Second. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Linda. Any questions or comments? Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck. It's good work. All those in favor? <laughs> Could I just clarify, too, that I would nominate Rebecca as chair of that committee? Hmm? Do we need to approve that? I don't know, but I think it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll take that as a motion, Kathy. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Um, questions, comments? Run while you can. <laughs> You know, um, I slipped right in there fast. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Okay. Thank you, 6 0. Okay, Kathy, am I missing anything else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Um, consideration to approve the Cape Elizabeth School Teacher Certification Renewal Plan is revised, November 2009. Alan? What I, what I would like to do this evening is I'm going to speak to this very briefly. Uh, this was a very last minute piece, a very last minute document that came to us. I feel strongly we need to have more time uh, to look at it and possibly have Mary Bruns here to talk about some of the perspectives of this. Uh, the only things that I will mention is this, is that if you go to the preface, it talks about the fact that uh, in compliance with the Maine Educational Reform Act of uh, 1984, teacher certification was changed. Originally that was carried out by the state. But after that, it's a requirement of each district to, number one, develop this format, which you see here, and number two, to determine uh, what program they will use to ensure uh, provisional, conditional, transitional, and targeted need certification for our staff and to make experience-based certification recommendations. Uh, this was done probably, I don't have the original one, but I would guess probably in 1984, 1985 is when the first time that the uh, school board approved it. It has to be renewed every, uh, every five years. Uh, this document is the basic document, but as you go through it, for instance, on page one, uh, within the professional learning community support system, uh, you do have number six where all new committee members will meet with the uh, Professional Learning Community Support System Steering Committee, uh, Chairman and current uh, committee members for orientation, et cetera. There are other pieces in here uh, that are, are additions to this, but I do think when you have a policy like this, 
it is important to talk with the person who is overseeing the policy to be sure any questions you have are answered. <laughs> so what I, am, what I am suggesting, because I also know that there have been some questions as, the, as you have met as a board to discuss some of these certification pieces, and we recognize there's some cost to this, that we do at this point pay somebody who oversees the program. We also do pay mentors, and we also do pay members of the certification committee. So my, my feeling is uh, it does contain, it contains some important information, but I think also updated information, because I don't know, possibly you, Trish, or Kathy have been here one time when this has been reviewed, but it has not been reviewed in my time here. And so I think it's really important that it be reviewed by the committee with you. And so my suggestion is that we bring this back in January, and I will invite the committee. And again, unfortunately, this came in the very day uh, Andrew was putting the packet together, so I, I feel it was quite late in doing this. So my suggestion would be to bring this back in January, have the people here, and to go over a brief discussion of the uh, plan itself. Mm -hmm. Any questions or uh, just table? Yeah, so we t table it. Um, just will that discussion. I mean, what some of the things we talked about, sort of state mandates, that type of thing, the, <clears throat> the plan will reflect anything that might transpire. Does, right. I mean, okay. Right. Um, and also reflect what is law as well as what you desire. Exactly. I, th I think that's an important piece because that one of the pieces that has come about, first of all, if you back up for a minute, I think Mary has been the chair of this since it first began. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's how uh, w one of the steps that she became the uh, secretary to the superintendent. Her main job was certification, and her secondary job was to maintain the records of the superintendent. Uh, so Mary has been with us from the very beginning. I know in my time here, there have been changes. Uh, probably one of the changes that I recognize very quickly is this mentor plan. And this mentor plan is an expensive plan if you have a lot of teachers, because you have to pay each one of those mentors to do that job. And what happened was is that Mary and uh, Who's the teacher? Shari. Shari, that's right. I was trying to think who did it. Shari were trained by the state and then came back and have done that training. But there is, a, there is an expense to that, and there's no question about it. And so I think we need to take a look at it. I think we also need to have an explanation of how records are kept. Uh, I have had discussions with some other districts that are now moving to a computerized record-keeping system. Uh, one is South Portland. And I have been watching very carefully to see what they're doing because I did serve on that committee in South Portland. And so I think there are a lot of questions that need to be answered as we move through the process. So I, I, I feel, number one, I will work with them so this is not a three-hour presentation, but is a, shot, a brief presentation, possibly based part of it on your questions. If you want to send questions to me, I can have those questions available for them to look at beforehand. Uh, in order to be prepared to do this. But it is a key component of uh, the school system, and I think you need to have a clear understanding of what it means. And could we have a clear understanding? I know how we're, we're looking at curriculum through a template. Is there any way we could just have a clear understanding of the cost of this pro? Certainly. Um, everything from mentors yep. to that would be helpful. Definitely. It, 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 I will say to you it changes yearly according sure. to the number of new teachers mm -hmm. or teachers who have moved into the system. But we do have those figures because we do pay those on a regular basis. Right. Yep. And this is so an unfunded mandate. So yep. at least it will give us yep. information to feed to um, I, I think that would be help, useful also because I know in some respects you want to have to mentor your teachers and right. have certification. So separate sort of yep. what yeah. is mandated. Okay, any other questions or comments? We're tabling this till January, but I think I was just going to suggest that you might solicit questions from people so that they... Okay, um, committee reports. Is there anyone who would like to do a report? Start. Go ahead, Rebecca. Um, I would just like to um, briefly mention that the um, ad hoc curtailment committee um, did meet before we were approved, basically, um, because we have such a tight time frame. Um, we met Monday, the yesterday yes. evening, um, and it was a very productive meeting. And in particular, I'd just like to mention that there is a public workshop scheduled for December 8th at 7 o'clock in the high school cafeteria. 
Um, and this is an opportunity for um, anyone in our community to come together, roll up your shirt sleeves, and um, work with other com uh, community members to brainstorm ar around various approaches that can be um, taken in regards to this curtailment. Um, and then there are other follow-up meetings that we'll be having to discuss the um, results of that workshop. And again, we are calling this a public workshop, not a public hearing, because um, we're really, this is all about problem solving, not, not a chance to espouse particular um, you know, personal approaches and stuff like that. So, um, Kathy, is there anything that, and, and I have to say that this was Kathy's idea, and it's a brilliant idea, and I um, thank her so much for bringing that um, to everybody's attention. So. I think you covered it. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other committee chairs? I would just say to, to refer to um, the website, at least for teaching and learning, um, we're going to be meeting this Thursday and it's still a work in progress and things are evolving and I'm very thrilled with the direction that we're headed and um, maybe some of the new board members will be joining us Thursday and um, please do refer to the, the town website for an update on what we covered in our last meeting. Same thing, the minutes for the communication committee, yes, which you just submitted, are on the website. They're on very the website. easy to read. And right. Um, and uh, I, I noticed that the HR committee meeting is not listed here. Is, it? is there one scheduled? We haven't scheduled one. Okay. I thought we were going to do one. Instead. Okay, public comment on agenda items. Okay, school board agenda requests. Um, announcement of upcoming meetings. I think they're again on the website. Karen mentioned teaching and learning the public here workshop on the 8th. Um, next school, regular school board workshop is Tuesday, December 15th. The next school board regular meeting is Tuesday, January 12th. And on Monday, December 14th, the, in the town council chambers, the new school board members will be sworn in. So um, that will be an exciting evening for them. Okay. Um, and policy committee Wednesday, December 16th, and you said HR is not yet scheduled right. the meeting. Okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mayor. Second? Second. Thank you. All those else is, nobody else has got one. We're adjourned. The last call. So, were you quicker this time than the other no. show? <laughs> You're a little bit longer.